In this project, we will simulate a shell and tube heat exchanger with a spiral baffle. The problem simulates heat transfer inside the shell and tube heat exchanger with a spiral buffer. The heat exchanger is a device for transferring heat between two hot and cold fluids. The two most common heat exchanger in the industry are plate heat exchanger and shell and tube heat exchanger. The shell and tube heat exchangers consist of a cylindrical outer shell and a set of inner tubes inside. One of the cold or hot fluids passes through the space between the tubes and the outer shell and the other fluid passes through in the inner space of the inner tubes in the same direction or vice versa. One way to enhance the heat transfer process between two fluids is to use buffers in the fluid flow path inside the shell. The use of buffers in the fluid flow causes turbulence in the fluid flow through the shell and further contact the fluid with the tube. And as a result, heat transfer is enhanced. But on the other hand, it causes a pressure drop in the fluid as well as the deposition of fluid in the shell. Therefore, the use of helical baffles reduce the pressure drop and sedimentation inside the heat exchangers in addition to strengthening the heat transfer between two fluids. In the current model, the heat exchanger consists of several internal tubes and a spiral buffer inside the shell. The flow of water with a flow rate of 0.5 kg per second and a temperature of 300 Kelvin enters the shell from the shell inlet and is exchanged with the tube with a constant temperature of 450 Kelvin. In fact, it is assumed that the cold flow passes through the shell and the hot flow through the inner tubes, but for simplicity, the model assumes that the temperature of hot fluid flowing through the tubes during the process has a constant temperature value which is assumed to be 450 Kelvin. The present 3D model is designed using Design Modeler software. The model is a shell and tube heat exchanger that includes an external shell and several internal tubes inside. The diameter of the shell is 3 cm and its length is 60 cm. Inside the interior and between the shell and tube, a spiral buffer is used. The meshing of the model has been done using ANSYS meshing software and the mesh type is unstructured. The element number is equal to 1,629,340 and the accuracy of the cells in the areas adjacent to the wall of the tubes is higher. Under the general setup tab, you can see different buttons from scales to units. By clicking on a scale, a new window will appear showing you the dominant extents of your geometry. Also, under the view length, view length unit section, you can see the default geometry units, which is meter in this project. Also, under the scaling section, uh, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings. Uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeters. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. By clicking on check button, uh, you will see that under the console tab, the Fluid software will start to check your mesh for any errors. Uh, also by clicking on report quality, again in the console tab, the Fluid software will, uh, will give you the quality report for your mesh. For example, you can see the maximum aspect ratio of your mesh, uh, maximum orthogonal quality, and etc. By clicking on display button, a new window will appear which you can see different part, parts of your geometry. Now in the appear window, which shows you the names of the different parts of your geometry, you can click and select each part and then click on display uh, so that the software will show you that part. Now there are several assumptions taken into account for this project. First, the type of our solver is defined to be pressure based since we are dealing with incompressible flows. As for the velocity formulation, we have selected the absolute format. And as for the time study, we have selected a steady time study since we didn't want our results to be a function of time.
After double clicking on the energy button in the appeared box, you can see that we have enabled the energy equations since we wanted to calculate the temperature changes and temperature distribution inside our computational domain. In present project, realizable K-epsilon model has been used to solve the turbulent flow equation since it is more accurate than the standard K-epsilon model. Now if you expand the fluid under the material section, you can see that the water liquid material has been added to the software. Now in order to add a new material, all you have to do is right click on fluid and then select new. After that, in the appeared window, uh, you either can define the new material by defining its properties yourself, or by clicking on Fluent Database, you may select your desired material from the list of available materials in the Fluent software. Now in order to introduce the water liquid material to the computational domain, all you have to do is to double click on the Fluid cell zone and in front of the material name, uh, change it uh, from air to water liquid. Now if you click on the inlet boundary, you can see that the type of this boundary is defined to be masculine inlet. By clicking on edit button, a new window will appear in which you can change the settings for this boundary. Now, in the appeared window, in front of the mass flow rate section, you can see the mass flow rate of water liquid entering our computational domain. Also, if you click on the thermal tab, you can see the temperature of this flow. Now, if you select the outlet boundary and then click on edit button, in the appeared window, in front of the gauge pressure, you can see the value of the zero pascal has been defined which means that our water liquid will exit our computational domain to the atmosphere. Now if you click on each of these bold boundaries and then click on edit button, in the appeared window under the momentum tab, you may see that stationary ball motion along with no slip shear condition are defined for all of these balls. However, their thermal condition are different. For example, if you click on the thermal tab for the baffle walls boundary, you can see that under the thermal condition, the coupled condition is defined, which means that this wall is in contact with fluid on its both sides. As for the next wall boundary, under the thermal tab, you can see that here the heat flux thermal condition is defined and the value of the heat flux applied on this boundary is equal to zero, which means that this wall is adiabatic. And for the final wall boundary, again, you can see that under the thermal condition, the th temperature condition is defined, and the value of uh, temperature here is equal to 450 Kelvin. After double clicking on the method, you will see that a new window will appear showing you the pressure velocity coupling. Also, you, will, you can see that uh, the spatial discretization methods are shown in this window. Also, you can change the discretization into other formats, like you can change them into first order oven and the other options available for each variable under their combo list. And for the simple pressure velocity coupling, uh, the simple algorithm is kind of an iterative solver which uses a relationship between velocity and pressure correction to enforce mass conservation and to obtain the pressure field. After double clicking on the controls button, in the middle section of the software window, you can see that new part will appear. In the appear part, you can see under relaxation factors for different parameters. Now these values are set here by the software automatically. You can change these values which are between 0 and 1 by yourself for different projects you do. But it is highly recommended that you do not do that since it may result in divergence. There are two ways to check that your uh, simulation process have reached convergence. 
Alongside the checking the residuals reaching and nearing the zero, you may define some report to make sure that an equation have reached convergence. For example, by just right clicking on the report definition, going on the new, you are able to choose between different reports. For example, you can define a mass flow rate report on a arbitrary boundary based on your geometry and your simulation. You are able to see whether this mass flow has reached a constant value or not. If yes, it may be a sign that your simulation has reached convergence, but the residual must be checked as well. After double clicking on the residuals button, a new window will appear. In the appear window, you can see the absolute criteria for equations like continuity, x velocity, y velocity, and so on. Now, when you set the software to start the simulation, there would be error between each iteration. Now, if that error is less than these criterion, it conveys the meaning that uh, that equation has reached convergence. After double clicking on the initialization button, a new window will appear showing you different methods of initialization, hybrid and standard. Now in the standard initialization method, you get to choose the first amounts and values for the first iteration of the simulation progress. These values refer to the values used in the first iteration of the simulation progress and if you choose the values for each parameter wisely, your simulation progress will finish sooner. It should be mentioned that you can also choose the first values and in, or the initial values by just clicking on the compute from drop down list and clicking on one boundary. For example, by clicking on compute from all zones, the software will automatically average the values in different zones and boundaries and put those values in the initial values for the software. After double clicking on the wrong calculations button in the appeared section under the parameters part by just defining the number of iterations and then clicking on calculate button, the software will start the simulation process. Now in this part, we have extracted 3D and 2D contours by the means of CFD post software. Now in order to extract a 3D contour, all you have to do is to click on volume rendering button and accept the appeared window. After that, on the low left side of the software window in front of the variable, you may select your desired variable. Uh, in this case, we have selected the velocity. After that, by clicking on the apply button, the software will show you the 3D contour. Now in this contour, you can easily see the velocity distribution inside our computational domain in 3D format. And you may also see the velocity of the air, water flow entering and exiting our computational domain for heat exchange. Now this time, in order to extract streamlines, all you have to do is to click on the streamlines button and then accept the appeared window. After that, just like the previous slides, uh, in the low left side of the software window, uh, in front of the start from section, we select the shell inlet boundary and then click on apply button. Now in this slide, you can easily see the streamlines of the water flow flowing inside a heat exchanger. Now in this contour, you can easily see the effect of baffles causing the water flow to rotate inside the heat exchanger space. Now this time, in order to extract a 2D contour, we first have to define a ball. To do that, we click on Locations button and then select Plane and then accept the appeared window. After that, on the low left side of the software window, in front of the method section, we select YZ Plane and left the value of X unchanged and click on Apply so that the software will define a plane in the middle section of our geometry. Now after creating the plane, we click on Contours button and accept the appeared window. After that, on the low left side of the software window in front of the location section, we select our defined plane. And underneath it, in front of the variable section, we select our desired variable. 
which in this case we have selected the temperature. And then by clicking on apply, the software will show us this 2D contour. Now in this 2D contour, you can easily see the temperature changes from the inlet boundary to the outlet where the temperature has uh, increased due to the heat transfer between the water liquid flow and the uh, inner tubes. Finally, the summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. To benefit from Mr. CFD services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com